Hello, my name is Michael Ellis. I'm the interpretive park ranger at Fort McAllister State Park, and this is a 32 pound Seacoast defense gun. Welcome back. We're at Fort McAllister, where naval history was made and General William T. Sherman's March to the Sea came to an end. Today we're talking about our 32 pound seacoast defense guns. In the early days of Fort McAllister, it was simply a naval battery meant to engage ships in the river. 32 pound naval guns were placed here in the fort to provide a range of fire to cover this section of the Yogichi River. The main purpose of these heavy guns was to engage enemy Union vessels attempting to follow or engage the Confederate blockade runners operating in this area of the coast. These weapons operated with a 9 to 14 man crew and could fire different types of ammunition including explosive shells, grape shot, and of course the 32 pound solid shot. These guns could also be used to fire the hot shot round. A hot shot round was a 32 pound solid shot cannonball that was heated in the furnace until it was glowing red. These glowing red cannonballs were then loaded into the 32 pound Seacoast defense guns with eight pounds of black powder, a wooden sabo to keep from igniting the black powder, and then the hot shot cannonball loaded on top. These hot shot cannonballs were meant to set wooden ships on fire as they came close. These weapons have proven to be effective against wooden vessels so for the most part, the Union Navy did not engage Fort McAllister for the first two years. This changed in 1863 when the Union Navy decided to test its most advanced weapon against the fort. In the early months of 1863, the Union Navy attacked the fort several times with their Passaic class ironclad warships. These vessels proved to be impervious to the fort's 32 pound guns and even hot shot ammunition. Although armed with some of the biggest guns fired during the Civil War, the ironclad warships also proved to be ineffective against the fort. So what was described as some of the most impressive large-scale artillery duels of the war basically wound up as stalemates with no significant damage or loss of life to either the fort or the attacking ironclads. After the Union Navy withdrew, the commanders of the fort knew they should prepare for a large-scale land battle. Some of the fort's 32-pound guns were then mounted on field carriages in order to defend the fort against enemy troop formations. This has been McAllister Minutes. I'm Ranger Mike. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.